Hello everybody, welcome back to Happy Little Diodes. Today we have a Spectrum in for a refurb, which just so happens to be encased in this Stone Chip Electronics keyboard. This keyboard is pretty cool for a number of reasons, including this external speaker which amplifies the noise coming from your Speccy and is really quite loud as we'll see later. You can choose from high, medium or low amplification, or no amplification at all. It also has a power LED, a reset switch and a delete key so you don't have to press two keys to delete. What's also nice is the whole Speccy goes inside this including the case so you wouldn't have had to take your Speccy apart to use it. I did a bit of digging on adverts for this and you can see that initially this had uh, two dials on it, one for the tone and one for the volume of the audio. That's different to the model we have here and I couldn't find any adverts that had pictures of the model we've got here but I did find a review from July 86 which is something like three years after it came out which does refer to the high, medium and low switch. So I guess we must have a later model here. At the back of the case we have the Mic Ear Power and TV sockets. You'll notice they're in a different order, we'll see why soon. Seems a little bit loose in the case. And a fully populated edge connector, although I'm a bit nervous of that white connector you can see there. I feel like that could obstruct some peripherals. Alright, let's get these four massive screws out and have a look inside. And we can see the keyboard PCB, the main PCB on the top there a smaller PCB plugged into the back of the Speccy attached by a ribbon cable and our Spectrum inside untarnished. This uh, material has been put in by the owner to separate the board from the Spectrum uh, to prevent uh, any, any damage to the Spectrum from pointy electronic bits. You might notice that red wire dangling through the hole there. That is a previous attempt to repair the speaker on this which isn't working. So we're going to fix that as well. Let's have a closer look at this board. You can see, even though this is a later issue of the board, there's quite a lot of modifications. We've got cut traces and patches. Zooming in a bit more, let's have a closer look at these patches. They look pretty fiddly to do. I don't envy the person who had to do that, but I've got a feeling that this had to happen to all of the boards. We need to remove this small PCB so we can get into the Speccy and do the refurb. It's connected by the edge connector, the TV uh, socket and the ear and mix socket so it's quite hard to get out but there it goes. Let's have a quick closer look at these connectors. That must have been tricky to align when they were fitting those. I know from experience of replacing the DC sockets that they can be tricky to get them perfectly parallel with the edge of the board. Here's our machine that needs refurbing. You can see it's in great condition that's because it's been encased in that stone chip keyboard for a long time. Unfortunately the white paint of the ZX Spectrum logos come off, but I think that's fairly easy to do if you have the tools to do it. It's quite a late serial number so I'm not expecting any early special issues in here. There's a couple of screws missing and one foot missing which we can replace very easily. Inside we have an issue 6A board. The keyboard membrane is totally FUBAR, we'll need to replace that. There's also the remnants of a reset switch from a Spectrum Plus case. We'll just remove that, that's not needed anymore. And everything else seems to be in order. Quick look at the back, there's no evidence of any major work or major modifications or anything at all, it looks new. So we're going to run some startup tests, we're going to replace the capacitors, we're going to de-socket the ULA and add a heatsink and we're going to clean up the edge connector. First things first, I'm going to check the resistance from ground to the three voltage supplies to the lower RAM. If any of these are too low, then we know that there's some kind of a short or a damaged chip somewhere, or a transistor even. These numbers look okay to me, so I'm going to power it up, check the current draw, and also check the three voltages to the lower RAM. Looking for minus 5, plus 12, and plus 5. And we get all three, so I reckon this Speccy isn't in touch shape. Just a quick note on the top half of the case, um, normally you would expect with a later spectrum like an issue 6A that the faceplate would be held on by brass tabs, but in this case it's not. Here where we should have a brass tab, we don't. That means somebody's glued the faceplate on and I'm just hoping they haven't glued it on with super glue, which it turns out they have. Okay, time to get the heat gun out and I'm going to use one of these little jobbies that come with the keyboard membranes from Retroleum. And hopefully by carefully heating with the heat gun and scraping underneath the faceplate with that plastic thing, we can get the faceplate off without bending it. We're going to replace it anyway because this one's scratched and the customer wants a brand new one, but there's no point in bending this one if we can avoid it. 
Okay, I got there in the end. It wasn't easy, but it came off and I preserved the faceplate. So let's get the keyboard mat off and have a look. There's all our hard super glue left over. Needs scraping down in order to fit the new one flush. Uh, but while it's off, let's get the keyboard membrane out and have a look. I also noticed that these pillars that the screws go into are a little bit broken, but I think with slightly longer screws we shouldn't have a problem. Alright, enough boring messy stuff with glue and cases and plastic and all that nonsense, let's get a composite mod done on the board so we can see what kind of video output we're getting. The diagnostic ROM's running, that's a very good sign, and it's going to tell us that our memory is absolutely tip top. I'm now to proceed with a capacitor replacement, but before we do, let's get this old reset switch cable off. Uh, the board's in the vise because that's how I like to work on the caps, it's easier to remove them and clear the joints. I do recommend replacing these one or two at a time and then checking that the board is still working after each one. Um, I'm doing more than one or two here because I've done this enough times, I'm fairly confident. There we go, nice new blue caps. Now I want to test the ULA before I desocket it because I'm going to be soldering it into the board and I need to make sure it's working correctly before I do that. So I'm going to use this cable which is stereo to two mono cables to try and load a game from audio. This has caught me out before I actually soldered a ULA in that wasn't loading games and had to desolder it again. So there's our load command. I'm going to use Otler on the PC to load Manic Miner via audio. It's very quick using Otler, it's like a speed loading algorithm. And everything worked perfectly. So I've removed the ULA from the socket, here it is. It ends in a 7, which means, in my opinion, it's a good one. You want to watch out for the ones that end in a 6. I'm going to put this safely to one side and get to work desoldering the socket. Top tip for desoldering, make sure your tip's nice and hot so that you melt as much solder as you can before removing it from the joint. That way the component's going to come out a bit more easily in the end. I then gently applied a force to lift the component while waggling each pin with a soldering iron trying to get it to go free. Eventually it dropped out into my hand. And because we're careful and always do a good job, we're going to clean all these joints of solder splashes, make sure we've got no shorts before we put the ULA back in. Let's give it a quick clean, get all the flux off there, and have a close look, make sure we've done a good job. Yeah, pretty happy with that. Let's move on to the stone chip keyboard, see if we can get that speaker working. First we need to remove the PCB from the case. Out it comes and now we can see it in all its glory. There's our speaker which is broken and the two switches for controlling it. The speaker's only connected by blue tack at the moment, there's no solder connections made. I guess they might have been removed in a previous repair attempt. Um, here's our speaker, so I'm going to remove that old red wire. I'm going to tidy up these terminals so I can repair it myself. It should just be a case of two short wires to connect to the PCB. I don't have a schematic to tell me where to solder to, but I have a strong feeling that it's these two joints here that we can see to the right of the speaker hole. Let's start by clearing those two joints. Now we'll remove the old red cable and get some solder braid out and tidy up these two terminals so we can see what we're working with. This is what I'm going to use, it's a single core, solid core wire, got red and black for positive and ground. Cut two short lengths and strip the ends. I'm going to solder them to the speaker, as you can see here. Slightly fiddly, but nothing that Bluetack can't solve. Interestingly, the positive and negative terminals of the speaker sit over the opposite connections on the PCB, so I've had to cross the wires like this. We'll solder it in now, and I think we should be up and running. Looking good, we'll give it a test run shortly. Okay, we're getting there. Just a couple more jobs left. I want to put a heat sink on this ULA to uh, help give it a longer life. These heat sinks fit perfectly, and I'm going to attach it exactly over the ULA like this, and it will fit in the case now that we've desocketed it. I'm going to attach the heat sink to the ULA using this thermal tape. I found the easiest way to do this is to apply the tape to the heat sink while it's still on the reel, and then cut the end off. Two short strips of the thickness of tape that I've bought seem to work perfectly. Before we apply it though, we need to clean this sticker off the ULA so we have a nice clean surface. So let's get the orange scrapey thing back out. 
And there we have it, almost finished. There's just one more job I want to do, which is to take a look at this edge connector. I've removed the heatsink, we can see it needs a bit of a clean. So I'm going to clean it front and back using a fiberglass pen. These things are dead handy, just be careful not to get little dusty bits of glass in your skin. Use a, use a cloth to clean up afterwards. It's kind of hard work, especially when you're doing a few of them, but the results are great, you'll see that it's worth it. There is one more ULA test I need to do, which I should have done before desocketing it, and that's to check it works with Div MMC stuff like this one, and it does, thankfully. Meanwhile, our new faceplate has arrived from ZX Renew, thanks Peter, and it came with a free iron brew tube bar. Get in. Here it is, check that out, that is spanking new. Alright, that is looking awesome, that is a fully refurbished 6A Specky with a brand new faceplate on. And I confess I did get carried away because the reset key wasn't working on the stone chip keyboard and I did a big investigation to find out why before realising that there are two reset keys and you have to press both of them at the same time. Well, at least it works. Okay, now for the speaker test, so sit back and enjoy. Thank you for watching.